The purpose of this video is to talk about how to write the literature review for your paper. So there's three main sections to your paper. The introduction, please watch the introduction video, um, the lit review, and the implications. Uh, so this video will be to discuss how to do the literature review. Um, this paper, as you click on these yellow boxes here are what I have highlighted. Um, a comment box will pop up to the right that gives you sort of some thoughts about how to review the article and it kind of helps you review it. Uh, so I'm going to scroll down to the beginning of the literature review. So this first page is just the introduction and then once you see risk factors that is the beginning of the literature review. And the, as we look at the headers here, risk factors versus gender. So risk factors is in all capital letters, and so that tells me it's a different type of header or a higher level header. And then under the risk factor headers, there's gender. There will also be race and culture. You can see that here. Um, so let's go, let's go to gender. Um, and um, so gender, part of the risk factors here, if we remember the, the uh, DV or the dependent variable for this paper is burden. We can see that here. Again, the author reminds us that it's burden. There are other DVs, but that is the main DV that the author continues to come back to. So what they're saying here for risk factors is they're saying what are all the risk factors that they found from reviewing all the literature what are the risk factors that increase the risk of burden? So what are the things that make burden unique or worse for some people rather than others? And so here the first sentence they say is that women seem to have more frequent, intensive, and effective involvement in caregiving. And so they have greater psychological burden. And then if you look at how many authors they cited, they did not just cite one author. So it is best to cite more than one author, and that is what's called the synthesis of the literature. So you don't cite one author, do a paragraph summary of what they had to say, and then move on to another author, and then do another paragraph summary. All of that is either called a summary or that might be an annotated bibliography. That's what that is. So what we want you to do for the literature review is to synthesize the literature. What did all of the literature come together to say? And as you can see, they've cited numerous authors just under the gender factor, right? So I would go through and count up how many authors they have cited just under that one subheader. And that'll give you an idea of how many research articles you're supposed to have when you identify these different subheaders. So they have reviewed gender, um, the relationship to the care recipient. That's what CR means. CG is caregiver and CR is the care recipient. So if you take a married couple, let's say two women and one woman is the caregiver and then the other woman is the care recipient. And so what is the relationship? And so what they're saying is spouses have greater difficulty, as you can imagine, versus say a child caring for their parent. They also say race and culture impacts um, the significance of burden. And what they say is that African Americans or black individuals have better coping skills and lower depression and lower problems um, versus white folks. White individuals or Caucasian individuals report higher levels of depression and other sort of negative elements. And then they have ideas about why African Americans um, or black individuals have less stress in this sense. And, and so some articles have pointed out that they may be more religious or they use spirituality in a more effective way um, than white or Caucasian individuals. So you can kind of read through and go through there. But we've just come up with three factors that make um, the risk of burden greater. So let's, let's keep going here. Um, so then they go into 
religion and spirituality. Then they talk about coping style, how we view sort of subjective versus objective burden. They talk about that. Um, then they go into patient symptom and characteristics. So what does that mean? That means um, is the person, um, do they know who they are? Do they know who you are? Do they leave the house and are they lost? Um, you know, that would be worse symptomatology versus they forget a few things here or there. So some of those um, characteristics can make it harder. What about if someone becomes aggressive? Um, again, that that can increase the burden and the risk. And so those are really the overall sub factors that contribute to burden. So how many sub factors do you have for your paper? And then look at all these articles that support it. So it can't just be one or two articles, but it needs to be a lot. The second half of the lit review discusses interventions. So the first half of the lit review talks about, again, what are the factors that contribute to burden? The second half talk about the effective interventions. So what intervention is effective to reduce the burden for caregivers of folks who have Alzheimer's? Um, and so they talk specifically about some counseling and behavioral management approaches. Um, they talk about a specific curriculum called the REACH programs. Um, and then they also and they, they go into that a bit, the REACH program. So those are the main interventions that they've looked at, they've reviewed. Again, they've reviewed all the literature um, and cited different authors. And then the future directions and conclusion section, that begins your implication section. I want you to think about that for your paper. We're not gonna discuss that in this video, um, but I want your literature review to look uh, similar to this, but please review the paper instructions in order to understand how to write the literature review. But this is just a brief overview of the one big article, um, and this should serve as a model as you go through your paper.